Hey Savvy People, it's Savvy Nick here, and today I'll continue with episode 10 in the C++ tutorial for beginners. In this episode, we'll be covering macros. All right, so you've actually seen a macro before in a previous episode, and I actually defined it as a constant in that episode. And it went something like this. We did the pound defined, and we defined a macro called pi, and then we set equal to a constant value 3.14. Now it was a little misleading what I said because it is defining a constant value here, but this is actually known as a macro and not a constant. There is a distinction between a macro and a constant. A macro is known as a preprocessor directive, which just means it's something picked up by the preprocessor while compiling and anywhere that that macro name shows up in the code, will actually be replaced by this definition for the macro. So anywhere I define pi now in the program will be replaced with the number 3.14. So if I simply wanted to print out pi, I can do this by doing C out and then typing pi. And what we would expect if we run this program now is pi to be printed out to us. So if we go ahead and run the program, we can see 3.14 was actually printed out. So what happened here? All that happened was the preprocessor went through, started checking everything, and saw a instance of pi and replaced pi, the macro, with 3.14, its value. And the syntax for macros goes something like this. You do pound define like we've been doing, and then you type the macro name, and then you can either specify some function next or a value. So some function. Let's actually give an example of this, although we don't necessarily understand what functions are yet. That will come in a future series episode, but in order to figure out how else to use macros, we'll have to use a function as well. Make sure to support the channel by subscribing below and hitting the notification bell for more Linux and programming videos. All right, let's define another macro real quick. We can do this by doing pound define, and then I'm going to call this one circ, all capitalized. I just like to keep my macros capitalized and I'm going to do open and close parentheses and a D inside. Once we get into functions, you'll understand that this looks like a function here. You can imagine that it sort of looks like main here. We just have one extra thing, something inside these parentheses called D right now. Following that, I'm going to go ahead and type pi times D. So what I'm actually doing here is I'm taking pi, a already defined constant macro value, and I'm going to go ahead and multiply it by some number d and then this will all be known as this macro called circ d the reason i have to have this d here is because i need to pass in some value in order to go ahead and multiply the two together we'll see this in a moment so these types of macros actually help shorten up the code with one-liners and help represent various different types of values, such as constants, which we've talked about, and can be used multiple times throughout your code. So let's see how this macro could help us. I'm gonna get rid of this because it will error out the code otherwise. And this time, we'll write a little bit of extra code. We'll do C out and ask the user for a diameter. So I'm gonna go, please supply a diameter, and put a space here, and then an end line at the end. Or a new line. Following that, I'm going to create a integer called d, and I'm going to ask the user to go ahead and supply d for me from the console. Next, I'll define a float. Since we have a decimal number we're working with, we need a decimal number in order to store our value. So we'll go ahead and call this one circumference. I'm going to set this equal to circ d, so I can go ahead and copy and paste this macro right in, and we'll check this out in just a moment. Let's finish up by typing c out, so we print something out to the user and we'll print out this circumference value from up above. Put an end line here as well, and that's practically it for this program. So now I'll go ahead and make sure I can compile this, but while it's compiling, what is going to happen is this circ d macro will get replaced by pi times d, and pi will get replaced by 3.14 by the preprocessor. And this can be used as many times as we want throughout our program. Let's say we wanted to go ahead and find the circumference of a circle multiple times. We can reference this macro multiple times. It doesn't just have to be here. All right, I'm gonna compile and then run my program. And now we're asked to supply a diameter. I'll put 10 to make things easy. And then we got 31.4. So let's go look back and see what happened here. So. We asked the user to supply a diameter, the user did, stored it in the D, D is for diameter here, and then we executed this macro function, which was defined up here as pi times D. So what does pi times D do? Well, it passed in D, which was 10, 
and it took 10 times pi, and pi was defined by 3.14, which also got replaced by the macro above. It's a little confusing at first, but just know that macros exist and that there are some more predefined macros that you can use in C++. I'll let you look those up for yourself if you are interested, but the one other use of macros that I wanna show is that macros can also be used with other preprocessor directives. If you went ahead and made it this far, please hit the like button, it really does help me out. Macros can also be used with other preprocessor directives, such as one here that I'll type out, uh, pound if def, and there's one pound if and def, and all these mean if something is defined or if something is not defined, and these always end with end if. So I'll give you an example of one real quick so you kind of understand the context here. What this will allow us to do is the preprocessor will check if a macro has been predefined in the program, and if it has or has not, depending on which of these you use, then it will include everything in between the pound if def or the pound if and def, which can be useful for when you want to create multiple different types of compilations that could include different types of code, perhaps for debugging or creating a program for release, which may not need all those debug statements that you have in your program. So let's do this real quick. Very simply, I'll put a pound if def here, and right after here, I'll put a pound and if, but before I finish up here, I need to define the macro directive so that the preprocessor can figure out whether it needs to define this line or not. So here I'm saying if there's a macro called debug, then go ahead and include this code in between the if def and end if. Otherwise, if there's not, do not include this code. And pound if end def just works in reverse. So let's go ahead and first define pound define debug and test our program once more. If I compile and I run my program, I can put in my diameter again, 10, and we see 31.4, no change from up above, and that's what we would have expected. But let's go ahead and take this line of code out this time. We'll save that. We'll rerun things by compiling and running the program. Notice that this time, please supply a diameter does not show up in our program, but we can still type in a value like 10 and get and get 31.4 for our circumference. You can imagine if you had a bunch of lines that you didn't want showing up in your final release, you can simply define a macro and then use these preprocessor directives in order to go ahead and make a decision on whether you need it in the current code compilation. Well, that's about it. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please make sure to post them in the comments section below. Also make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Catch me in a great community on Discord, and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.